I'm Tim Smith, Collections Manager here at the Adams County Historical Society, and today we're here to tell you just a little bit about our collection and how it's organized. So basically, everything in the Historical Society, whether it be a book on our shelf, or a letter that was donated to us by a historical figure, or a chair or a table in our museum collection, uh, was given to us at some point, and it was accessioned into our collection. And everything in our collection has a number on it. Starting in 1943, uh, items were given an accession number. And uh, we, currently, uh, I'd say we have about 10,500 different numbers. Now, in each of those numbers, there are a bunch of items. So there could be as many as 50,000 uh, items that are cataloged presently in our collection. And there are probably a lot more that we haven't gotten around to cataloging yet but everything in our collection has an accession number on it, and we're gonna talk a little bit about that. Joining us today is Andrew Dalton, the Assistant Collections Manager, to tell us a little bit about how we house our items. Thanks, Tim. Yeah, today we're gonna to take you on a little bit of a backstage tour and show you some of the rooms in our building that we don't usually have open to visitors that are uh, for storage purposes. We have our collection in this building, and we also have some uh, material stored off-site um, after we moved out of Schmucker Hall in 2011, I believe. But um, to go upstairs, uh, we'll go through the different rooms and we'll show you how we have things organized and also highlight some of the really rare and interesting artifacts uh, and documents in the collection. So we'll head up. I should point out, in the hallway as we walk to the second floor, we have the bicycle of Henry Stort from the 1880s, and this um, uh, piece of equipment was actually built by Henry Stort from a kit, and uh, Henry Stort at one time was the president of the Adams County Historical Society, and also you could say sort of a volunteer collections manager. A lot of our collection is too large to fit into regular sized boxes that we store some of our archival materials in. So we have these large cases where we have flat storage. Um, and there's a couple things I wanted to highlight, some very interesting pieces in our collection that are in flat storage. Um, the first here, this is an original 1850 map of the town of Gettysburg. Very rare. There are only a few known to exist, but this was really the first detailed map ever drawn of the town of Gettysburg. Uh, labeling the houses, the house owners and residents of the buildings in the town, and also the roads, churches, cemeteries, and there are also some illustrations around. So this is a map we use a lot when we do property research, when we help people who live in Gettysburg and all around the county for that matter, when they do uh, research on their house or any site that they're interested in, we will refer to maps like this. This is one of hundreds of things we have in, in what we call flat storage. Mm -hmm. This is our uh, photographic collections room. And of course, like many uh, archives, we uh, have separated the items into different uh, categories. But e within each room or each collection, we do th have things in numerical order by accession number. And uh, over here, um, in the closet, for instance, here we have negatives, uh, original glass plate negatives. And we do have a Henry Store collection coincidentally right here. And in the Henry Shore collection, we have a collection of negatives that he himself produced in the 1880s. Um, for instance, here is a negative of the original um, wooden observation tower on East Cemetery Hill that was built in 1878. This is actually an 1888 photographic negative of that uh, tower. We also have a negative of the bicycle of Henry Stort in our collection here also, since we just showed you the bicycle. And then over here, um, we have a collection of photographic albums uh, collected by locals who donated them here. This is probably the rarest album in our collection. It was brought back from World War II from the, um, from the, the islands in the Pacific by Donald Krauss, a veteran from Adams County. And it's actually a, a captured artifact from a Japanese soldier and it has uh, photographs of the Japanese soldier and his family. And of course, uh, we don't know the names, uh, but we are looking to have this translated so that we can um, make some sort of identification based on it. But we have this al along with dozens of other photographic albums that are 
um, from uh, prominent local families like the Stewart family. We actually have uh, Henry Stewart's photographic album, which is one of the rarest of, of early Adams County photographs. We have a large collection of framed storage. And uh, one of the things that people ask about all the time is our large panoramic photographs taken during the 1913 50th anniversary of the Battle of Gettysburg of the veterans camp that was on the fields of Pickett's Charge. So the Adams County Historical Society is sort of the county archives also. We have a lot of records pertaining to county government. We have all the tax records from Adams County from 1800 up until the 1960s, the original tax records, and we have them categorized by town or township and by year in these archival boxes. And we also have a large collection of estate papers and wills from everyone who's died in Adams County, as well as all the deed books from Adams County. The courthouse has uh, copies of all these records, but we house the originals here in our society. This room is uh, kind of a hybrid room in our building. Um, we have a system that we've, we've started just recently now um, where we've attempted to, to reunite smaller groups of objects that were donated at the same time under what Tim described as the accession number system, which is what a lot of museums and archives used to organize their collection. But here we've begun to take things and reunite them very crudely, you could, as you can see from the post-it notes, back with the items that they arrived with. And through doing this, we've reunited many, many items in the collection that had been separated for years. Sometimes a photograph had been separated from the caption, and those two things were put back together for the very first time. Um, and sometimes there was a letter and a photograph that went together, and putting them together uh, gives a lot of context to the items and under, allows us to understand how um, things were received long ago and, and how they had been collected by the individual that donated them. Um, and I wanted to show the first donation recorded in our accession book from 1943 is actually this 50 shilling note from 1773. Um, and that, that is, so this is the first official donation to the Adams County Historical Society. I'll flip it over. Um, I really enjoy how it says on the reverse side, the side that was just on top, um, something to the effect of to counterfeit is death. <laughs> and there's the, the tag as well that says um, a session number one. And uh, we also have our extension library, which is books that we um, deemed a little bit less important or perhaps just a little bit more brittle that we didn't want to have them downstairs in our main library. So we have these in here in this room as well. As we uh, move across the hall, you can see this is an 1880s house. So um, as a historical society, we sometimes work to fill up just about every corner that we can to, um, to have boxes um, just about in every place you could imagine. Uh, so this is our, our main family collections room. Uh, we have endeavored over the past year to organize this room um, in order by accession number so that we can actually uh, find things more easily and more efficiently um, and actually have things housed uh, properly with the items they were received with. And Tim's going to explain a little bit more about some of the collections we have in this room. And so in these boxes of, um, you know, family collections might be like a half a box for uh, one family, or they might be as many as 20 or 30 boxes pertaining to a collection. Uh, many of these are family collections, but we also have collections dealing with uh, businesses like Adams County Cold Storage I'm standing in front of, or um, some kind of... Um, uh, organizations such as uh, Meals on Wheels, which we have a, a nice collection of. And let's walk over and we'll see some specific uh, items on our shelf in this collection. This photograph is one of the, the rarest in our collection uh, concerning the local black community during the Civil War period. This is a photograph of Mag Palm. Her full name was Margaret Palm. And in the late 1850s, she was um, the victim of a kidnapping attempt in the town of Gettysburg. Slave catchers grabbed her and tried to tie her up and remove her to the south um, to sell her. And, but Mag was apparently very strong and uh, fought them off and, according to one account, bit one of their thumbs off. So Mag Palm was a, a very colorful and, um, and um, well-known figure in Gettysburg's black community at the time. And her story was uh, later used by Elsie Singmaster as inspiration for a uh, fictional novel. 
Uh, but this is some, one of the rarest photos we have of her. We have, I believe, only three in the collection. I mean, in this photo, she is supposedly holding her hands the way they were bound by the slave catchers in 1858. Here is a, um, a box I just pulled off the shelf, and this is uh, the J.W.C. O'Neill collection. Uh, Dr. O'Neill uh, came to Gettysburg in 1863. Prior to that, he was a doctor in Hanover and actually uh, run a, had a practice in Baltimore for many years. But uh, with the outbreak of the Civil War, um, he thought it'd be um, safer to live in Pennsylvania and moved here. And coincidentally, um, you know, he was... Uh, uh, born, I believe, in Virginia. His father was a slave owner, and uh, he, had, he was somewhat sympathetic to the Southern cause. And so after the Battle of Gettysburg, he went around, and if he noted where a Southern soldier was buried, he mentioned it in his day books. And uh, for instance, this is um, uh, O-16, which is our O'Neill 16. Um, uh, that's how they did the accession number at that time. And uh, it's his 1865 visiting book. And here um, in the back of the book, it uh, mentions that a uh, Captain Davis of Stort's Cavalry was buried near Colonel uh, Carl Forney's farm near Hanover. Obviously, that was a uh, Confederate killed in the cavalry action in Hanover on June 30th. So um, um, we have is the original, the original books. Now, somebody has gone through these and transcribed the notes and put them into a database so that people who are researching individuals who killed during the battle could learn more about them. We also collect things um, from more recent years. Um, we're interested in what's going on in Adams County today and in the last 10, 15, 20 years, and we have a collection here of materials um, both pro and anti-casino. Uh, we're interested in collecting and documenting both sides of even current debates that are going on in, in the Adams County community. Um, and above it, we have um, the collection of Walter Hess, who was a, a veteran of World War I. And inside the box, uh, one of the boxes, we have um, some of the um, items that he carried with him in the First World War. Um, he was, a, I believe, a medic, and this is a, his a medical bag, um, one of his um, cloth medical bags that he had with him um, in Europe during the First World War. And if you're more interested in the First World War, you should go see uh, more of our collection, which is on display currently at Special Collections in the Gettysburg College Library. Um, there's a new, brand new exhibit that, that is in there, um, and it was just put up a couple weeks ago, and we have actually some of the pieces from that very collection are there on display. So uh, now we're going to go into um, what we call the objects room, and it's also used as the processing room. So a lot of volunteers for the society will work in this room and they will catalog materials into our computer software system called Past Perfect. Um, but on the rack in here we have our um, objects that are in the Wolf House. Now most of our objects are off-site in storage at the moment and uh, obviously we're always looking um, for, for uh, a new building for the society because this building is too small for us. But um, what we have been able to do is keep some of our our rarest pieces in this building, and we have loaned some of them to different institutions, but just uh, scanning across the shelves here, you can see at the very top is the uh, speaker's podium from the Hotel Gettysburg in the square of Gettysburg that uh, President and General Eisenhower used for his press conferences when he was in Gettysburg. Um, he's one of our most famous county residents. Um, and then we also have boxes and boxes of relics that were basically taken up off the field by... Um, civilians shortly following the battle. This is one of my favorite boxes. This is a, a horse bit um, and also a, a ramrod. And I, I like to think our collection is, is one of the, the rarest of battlefield relics because it was actually uh, pieced together by the farmers and townspeople who were traveling the battlefield and um, their own property in many cases and picking up items off the, off the field as early as a, the day after the battle. So. Um, these relics are a really priceless part of our collection, and um, so they've been on display at various institutions, the, the Park Library, the uh, National Park Service Museum, as well as the, uh, we have items at the David Wills House and the Eisenhower Farm. Many of the items in our collection, uh, you have, I have a personal connect, connection to. Obviously, um, some of you know I wrote a book 
on uh, John Burns. I'm his biographer. And here is a presentation cane that was given to John Burns by the city of Pittsburgh uh, after the Civil War. And uh, this uh, cane made its way to his adopted daughter and his adopted daughter's child in uh, Washington State. And eventually it was donated back to the Adams County Historical Society and it has a really nice inscription on the top of it that talks about that. Here at the Society, we are still accepting donations. Um, every year we take in maybe 100. Um, it varies between 80 and maybe 120. Um, one of our newest donations is this very old um, bank. It was uh, kind of like a piggy bank, but um, it's, uh, I don't know if it has a, an official name. I think on the internet it's called an Indian Bear Bank or something to that effect. I'm sure some of you maybe had one or have seen one before. Uh, but as far as we know, we only have this one exactly like it. We have a few others similar, but um, we wanted to just demonstrate here how it works. Uh, you can see the, 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 you put a, a coin on the um, shotgun, and then you just press this trigger, and the coin goes into the bank.